guys today we are looking at a sketchbook flip through so this is a sketchbook from Cornelison in the UK and it's just got that beautiful vintage cover and it's got Fabriano uh, mixed media paper inside it but I've used it for um, <laughs> what am I saying watercolor and so we're just gonna have a look through so you can see on the front here I have some of my printables from Etsy so this is like a little library card pocket and I've printed that on cotton vellum and I've been really liking putting one of these in the front and I can kind of say something about the journal, um, something I might have enjoyed or something I need to work on for the next one or something like that. And so here are, like you can see the sheets that I've printed off and then um, just cut out some of those. So I've also been liking, so there's a few different type of envelope ones there that you can use uh you know just to write something about um what you achieved in the sketchbook or what you'd like to continue working on <clears throat> there's also some lace printables there so it just adds that little bit of extra element um before you even uh you know so you can just to take away a little bit of that um initial worry so you've already got something nice uh in the front of the um journal there so the next thing I did on this is like the first page of the actual mixed media paper so I I um, painted just a little palette on here so we did a um, video a tutorial on this palette so what I'm going to do is link a playlist that has every um, tutorial so probably half of the pages here have tutorials and I will link that in a playlist and then the other half like this page um, I just did this recently to finish off this uh, sketchbook so I kind of tried a rose here I try one in every sketchbook and um, a little bit of practice I know it's sort of not going to be a masterpiece but I just I just keep sort of trying um, different elements and different things that I you know want to hopefully one day succeed in So the page that we just went through um, over that was uh, just sort of a little bit of a study on colour for roses and just trying out different colours, colour mixes and then we had the cake and then this one here is something that I've kind of just done a quick again study of just to remind me that I want to work on some rock pools and like a collection of paintings um, with little sea urchins and um, just all different things that you can kind of find in rock pools. So then this one here is a part of the advent calendar that we did last year, but I think it's also nice even when it's um not for Christmas, just to have a kind of red color palette. So this is a really nice, um, you know, color palette, like even if you were doing birds or something else different, um, there's kind of already a color palette here set up for you that you can look at. So here we have some shoes which we also did as part of the advent calendar so they're not Christmassy and I do have some more of these coming up so I've gotten some requests for um, creating making these um, as like a template a printable template so I have um, like a little booklet they are not quite finished yet but so maybe by next week they might be out um, and so we're going to work on a few more of these kind of things and, you know, it should be really easy uh, to follow. So 
So here we have a video that we worked on how not to overwork a painting. So I kind of talk you through my process and then I kind of show you a finished painting at the end there. So you can kind of see um, even from just the videos to a painting where I'm actually just concentrating on the painting and I can see the page and the paper without kind of, you know, cameras and um, things. So um, you know working through that so there's a lot of good tips in that video as well and then this was just um, pra you know I always tip in little uh, extra things that kind of relate to the sketchbook so I think that's a good thing as well um, you know clip things on staple things in um, tip in little palettes or little mixing charts that you worked on uh, this here we also did as part of the advent calendar as you can see it's just a um, you know, it wasn't for Christmas, but I, I kind of just wanted to put some of those all sprinkled throughout the advent calendar, just little watercolor video gifts. So they weren't necessarily Christmas themed, but I really, really loved this one. Um, and yeah, the colors and everything just really beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and so then here we have um, this was a frame that I did for the advent calendar and I want to return to that because like I really liked the frame I actually want to needle point it at one stage but um, you can see this was the video so after I'd done the frame and everything I didn't have a lot of time and I wasn't super happy with how this came out but I just I was happy with the frame and I think um, yeah we'll work We'll work with that a little bit more again, but this page here was the next day and this was a really, really nice one. So I really liked how the bows turned out and the wreath and the, um, the shan like wall sconce chandelier and everything. So this was a really lovely one. So I really liked this page. It's a very simple one. We were just practicing glazing and kind of overlapping different shapes and colors and working on color mixing. And you could fill an entire page like that or for a card um, and sort of leave a little circle or an oval in the middle to write their name or write a little note. Um, yeah, or just fill a whole page like that just to practice um, some of those techniques. And then so this page here, you can see on the left, I didn't put really anything except these swatches. And then we did a video, sort of a galaxy inspired video. So this is again, something that I want to work on more. You can see a theme here. Um, I haven't really gotten a chance to go back and revisit a lot of these things that I wanted to work on a little bit more this year, but still I'm so glad that they're in the sketchbook and kind of the beginnings of that idea are still there. So that's one of the things that I love about sketchbooks. You can put things in there. And so, you know, if you don't have time or you don't have um, even the skill level, like some of these ideas I'm just, um, you know, I put down and then I wait until like I can figure out how to do a certain thing or how I want to mix a certain color or, um, you know different types of techniques to use to create um, that element so this these pages these four you haven't seen before so I took four or five cities and I made a little color palette that reminded me of that city and then just kind of did some drawings based on that so I really loved this one here so this is inspired by um, this painter so he does these beautiful underwater uh, watercolor scapes and so I have wanted to try one of those for a long time and the sort of the sandy part didn't come out that well but I was pretty happy for the first try and then this one here is a really simple technique but a really beautiful one on the left for New York so I will do a video tutorial about that one and then this one here was um, the one on the right was the Queen Anne's Lace, so I really loved that as well.
So you can see the softness there in the in this city and versus some of the brightness of the other ones and um, I think yeah it's just it's very interesting you can see this one here is for Paris which I've never been to but that's just kind of how um, you know how I feel about it and so you can do cities either that you live in or that you've visited or that you want to visit and try and create a little color palette based on kind of how you feel about it and so um, it's a really fun kind of thing to do so you can see there's a little Sabrina quote from the movie and um, yeah I really love it pink roses for Paris so you can see that even from the first um, city that we did and there was like the poppy and that one is something that I have been working on for a while you can see also these emblems so kind of from the stone cartouches among uh, above the um, Parisian doorways so that that kind of reminds me of that as well but um, so the poppy in the first city that we did we will do a video about that I've got a few different iterations of that over the years and this most recent one I kind of I was trying to do something like that in the um, the art therapy kind of video that we did and then yeah so then this one was kind of came from that so I really enjoyed that and how to see the progression through different sketchbooks um, but these two are just some paintings that I kind of want to um, frame and so they're just kind of put in there at the moment and then this is from a collab I did with Nibs Watercolors so I really love her shop as you know who you may know and um, yeah so this was the Valentine's edition and then uh, on the other so I'll show you now this page here so this is done using an ethograph so some of you have gotten these as well and I'll link this below this is something I got last year and I haven't again had a chance to sort of delve more into it into this as I had hoped um, but uh, on the one hand it's a beautiful mop brush and on the other side you have this ethograph which is kind of like silver point but you don't have to have a special ground or you don't have to kind of prepare the paper you can just use it and it deposits this uh, silver color onto the page so I want to try and maybe use that I've been looking at kind of classical painting techniques and putting the imprimatur down and which is just like a base layer of a colored base layer and then doing the grisaille technique which is kind of um, using gray to put the values in and I'm wondering if I can do that with the ethograph uh for you know the the watercolor so that's my plan uh for that as well and then um yeah that page that we just did was like two different palettes with the peach pop so one was like a cooler tone and then the warmer tone on the side and then this one here is i do have a video about these um sennelier oil pastels so really love those and then this one here I kind of show you in a video how I used the Daniel Smith iridescent blue silver and add shadows to her. So these portraits, this is also something that's been highly requested and I will work on those. They're not easy for me, so I am going to have to take some time to work on, um, you know, some templates for those. And um, yeah, I just, I like, I, I, I thought that I would have a lot more time this year to kind of devote to, um, you know, growing some of these ideas, but um, you know, it hasn't happened. So hopefully still that will eventuate, but um, you can see here, this page I really enjoyed and this is a very different color palette for me but it's very much one I think which is really relevant now going into fall like in the US and um, so yeah I would highly recommend checking out this if you're interested in kind of like a more full um, color palette it's a really beautiful one and you could see the um, flowers there on the left were done just using that palette so even though the, the palette's quite strong the the flowers as you water down those colors you can get very soft colors as well okay so um this page here was one of my favorite um series that 
to film so this was a shadow a series of three videos about shadows and just learning like a lot of different things and I, I was able to actually find and film some really beautiful uh, moments and show different um, different colors of shadows and different types of shadows and it's something I'd actually like to re-look at and redo another video series about that because it was really really beautiful um, just looking for those different little elements and I'm sure that you have them and you can find them around you just um, different ways that the light comes in or different ways as you go for a walk you might find the light coming through the leaves and things like that so this one here was a page um, just about a palette that I created for last year this palette but I've changed this around a little bit and you'll see and I'll give you a little sneak peek at the end of the video of two new palettes that I'm creating as well and I've change this one around a little bit i'm not exactly sure 100 percent sure if it'll stay like this yet but You can see the leaves here and this was a whole I think this might have been the first part of the other page with the beautiful autumn palette as well so this is more of that same kind of palette and another really nice exercise in glazing and mixing and dropping colors in and seeing how they disperse and seeing how they mingle uh, this one here is um, so this was the new Daniel Smith colors that I got um, for this video and I was trying out some of these really violet earth, the beautiful violet earth colors. So you can also achieve these by mixing a bit of purple into your browns, a purple or a deep, you know, um, like a deep red or quin magenta or something like that. And um, yeah, so just... So I, I couldn't resist in this video and I wanted to a little play with the some of these, my favorite sort of mixes there, uh, creating some irises. And we also did this on the how to mix dusty colors video and the next one, which is how to mix smoky colors. And so what I did on the opposite page also, I didn't do, do this on camera, but I just did it quickly sort of before this video. Um, this is an iris with more dusty colors for the shadows and sort of in the painting. So it's a lighter sort of, um, you know, a lighter look to the painting and a little bit more airy. And then this one is the smoky colors and it's a little bit, um, got a bit more moodiness, a bit more depth to it. But so you can see there the difference just that you choose with accent colors. So I, I did, I used the pretty much the cobalt violet and the Holbein lilac for the body of the um, irises. And I think the interference lilac by Daniel Smith. And, uh, but I just used different, you know, either sort of lighter, more dusty uh, accent colors or smokier, deeper, darker ones. And yeah, it completely changes that, um, the mood of, of the color palette. So this one here was just another swatch page of some handmade watercolors that I did. And again, I'll link this below. Um...
So these are some of my favorite pages that we did last year. Um, so I think, so yeah, I'll link the videos, but the, um, I really, really loved, so I think we did a few different videos about these and um, it kind of shows you in there how it's taken me quite a process to get to this stage. Um, so we did like, we worked on white flower petals with the orchids there, we worked on transparent petals and how you can um, sort of show that they're curling and you know creating shadows and all that kind of thing and then this one here I really loved as well because I was incorporating a little bit of the graphite in there so that was the first time I had tried that and I really really loved it and then these little flowers here I just showed how you can um, create a very simple layered effect but because of the colors that you choose it can look a little bit more sophisticated so yeah, this was a really fun um, couple of videos. So this page was was part of the actually the next page where we swatched out some pastels and uh, yeah then I I wanted to I just went back in I, and sort of sketched the 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 sort of the inward part of the petals the small part of the petals and I never finished that sketch but I really liked how it was so sometimes I will just leave something so if if I get to a point where I really like it and I'm not sure where to go next, I just leave that thing um, and, you know, I can go back to that and rebuild from there. If sometimes I feel like if I keep going, I might lose that initial uh, part that I liked and the initial thought. And so, yeah, um, you know, sometimes people say like, just keep going, finish it. But sometimes I think you can retain that that just the element that you really like and save that um, for later and you can sort of go into it in different ways so yeah then this um, the page on the left here is we did a, a video on how I swatch and how I kind of um, I looked around at all the ways different people swatch and then I came up with a way that I really liked and worked for me to learn about the colors and you can see the cobalt violet on the left. Someone actually brought this up this week that it is a very light, fast color. Sorry, hang on, it's getting a bit loud. Um, this, that's, sorry, the vacuum there. So the, so the cobalt violet is actually a really light, fast color and I'm not sure why um, I, I don't know if I got a tube that was mislabeled, but, um, so here I tried the orchids again that we did on the other page. So I don't have these on video, but I tried them in a transparent way and with more sort of color and I didn't really like that. So uh, this one here is just my, some of my favorite mixes. And so there's a whole video about this.
So that was the the a current palette that I had at the time, but I think I, I moved it around and I uh, changed it a little bit. This one here is my sister's palette. So it was a galaxy inspired palette that I created for her birthday last year. And there's a video swatching all of that out. Then there was just a pretty rose, um, very just a loose sketch that I just cut around and put in there. So you can see again, I'm just tipping in things. This one here was an angel I was working on for, I wanted to try and get that ready for Christmas Eve for last year's advent calendar, but that just, that just ran away from me. So yeah, didn't do that maybe this year. And yeah, this was the 2020 favorite colors edition. Uh, I still love all those colors. I try and be very particular when I put in like my favorites. They're things that are tried and true and I know that I will keep enjoying. So I don't want to sort of um, like say something and then have have it be like something I'm not really interested in again in a month. So these ones here are um, a sort of a variety of um, comparisons between like the Fine Tech, the Artist Loft, um, Schmincke, and then these pages here. So these are a couple of the last pages and um, I get a few questions about color mixing and things like that. And you can see here that these pages are not pretty. Um, you know, the left-hand side, I was just mixing out a whole bunch of colors to find which ones I like, and then I've sort of found the ones I like, and I made a little kind of palette of those there, and then I also swatched out Cobalt Violet with just a bunch of different things there. So a lot of the mixing just comes from, you know, this kind of just trying out different things, uh, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, trying to uh, remember and, and like keep little notes of the mixes that I do like and things that, um, and you know, yeah, just just working on that. Like I do work on it and um, to try and find exactly the right one. Like sometimes, you know, it'll just be a blue and a, a brown or something, but you really, like I really like to find that exact um, match that I like. And then here, this this last double page spread is just two different ways of mixing the same palette. And I will show you that palette. And then I think that is it for this, um, for the sketchbook. So on that page, I just wrote down a few things that I want to try and incorporate into my artwork and we'll probably talk a little bit about some of those in some upcoming um, videos. But I think it's a really nice way just to make a note of things that you want to work on in the future or things that you're interested in, you know, learning about. And so here, this will probably do this um, sketchbook flip through as well at some point. So this was one from last year. And again, um, these three, I think they just had a few pages to finish off. So I will just finish off um, what's in there. And I'll also do a, like pair the um, sketchbook flip through with a tutorial or another video about something from that sketchbook. So I already filmed I, this has this voiceover has kind of taken me all day so I, while I was taking a break um, at one point I filmed the um, the transparent leaves it's really really lovely so it's not um, yeah it's it's short it's not exactly I would have liked to go into a bit more detail but just um, I wasn't able to film that much but I think you'll be able to get the gist of it and yeah it's really beautiful so um, 
And then this is a palette. This is the start of the Old Masters palette, which I'm really excited about as well. So um, it's coming along. Still a few things left, but you can see I'm always drawn to the more modern bright colors with the sparkle on the left and then the more like deep and um, moody colors of the like like na more natural colors. So here is a little um, swatching of the um, the palette that I've just created. And then this is the palette that we will use this in the next video as well. So this is kind of my old palette, a little bit re, um, re, re jigged. So I hope this wasn't too disjointed. Um, but I, I didn't expect a sketchbook flip through to take so long, but I can see like there was so much work that went into last year. And if somebody just judged 2020 off the, the sketchbook flip through, then they would probably think it was a much nicer year than it was. So anyway, um, I'm glad to have that kind of remembrance. And I think that's one of the nice things about the sketchbooks is that, um, you know, you can you can create different um, different experiences. I don't know. You can you can find different moments in there. So I really like that. And you can see here. So like we did this video the other week. So this is sort of the start of that um, new palette. And then these are the uh start of so what i have already in the old masters palette so yeah that's all for this week guys uh well that's all for this video but i will um i'll try and have the transparent leaves video up after this one as well so that you can watch this and then go paint um yeah so have a really lovely week i will see you soon bye